Okay, folks, today's episode of Genetics with Jeff is the yellow belly. This is a very popular morph. When was this morph created? I don't remember exactly, like the mid 2000s. Amir Soleimani uh, was responsible for the first ones and revealing to the hobby what was making the super form. He later released that was making, was the uh, yellow belly was making the ivory. Right. Now, a yellow belly, anytime I'm looking on Morph Market or on our own website, you can have a gene or two genes. The second you add yellow belly, it increases the value and the beauty. Right. Yeah. Um, I, I joke with the guys, and I, I'm kind of crazy about the yellow belly around the shop. So I, I tell them that everything could be yellow belly, and we would be fine. Because I hold back a ton of yellow belly things all the time. Uh, there, there's, there's no bad combo, and it's funny. Like the least interesting combo is the super, and the super's still pretty cool. Uh, but other than that, like every, every yellow belly combo to me is great. Some people don't care for it so much, but they're probably a minority because everybody has yellow belly. In the single gene, it's again, and and I don't want to ever say anything is plain or looks normal. Single genes are quite, it's really the combinations of genes they is are, where you're creating something. They are relatively normal, and that's that's why uh, the reveal was, uh, Amir made us wait for it uh, quite a bit, which was funny to then learn what had made the ivory. Was a relatively normal looking plane? You know, it's, it's an above average thing, and it, it's hard to say that we would notice it now because we've now been around yellow belly for so long but back in the day like a kind of a high gold or a blushed back or something from the the fancy bag of imports that wasn't crazy to just like have a snake to kind of look like this but um that's why the reveal was uh much anticipated because a lot of breeders went through their collections after that and they found and one, two, three yellow bellies that they'd already had that they got from a pet store or a bag of fancies from Outback or wherever, like they had yellow bellies. And Mike even had a couple. And then we imported some more uh, later when that was the, the hot thing to do. And is there anything about this animal? If I had a normal in my hand and you had the yellow belly, I would say to you, okay, show me why this is a yellow belly. What is distinctive to somebody who doesn't know, the layman, that you're looking at this snake and what is telling you this is a yellow belly again let's speak to the layman who doesn't know that well, would be me um it they're they're highly variable I, i've stated this online before it is the most variable gene i think in the hobby like you can have animals that look basically normal or really this i picked this one because this is a good middle of the run example um but you're wanting to see some nice bright hues along the back. It's little, like highlighting little almost. Gold, little gold edging. Typically, the, they'll have some flaming up the sides here, like there, 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 all along the body in varying points. And the the name is slightly misleading because they don't always have a yellow belly. That was they, my next question. They, have little, <laughs> they can have little yellow scales in between the edges uh, of the belly on the sides of the animal, but I've seen some that really do have yellow bellies, and maybe some of the mirror's first ones are like that, I don't know. Right. But um, that's not indicative of the animal. But the, the clear, the relatively clear belly with the digitized, uh, pixelated, however you want to call it, edge, is, that is indicative. And sometimes that's even pretty minimal. So like I said, they're highly variable in the hobby, just in every form. Right. Well, that is a telltale then, the digitization yeah. around the edges. Yeah. Again, somebody who doesn't know could maybe look at the normal and look up and go, oh, this might be a mel at yellow belly. So that's actually a good thing to look at. So we've got a lot of examples of a yellow belly in combination. Mm -hmm. So let's get to those guys. And we could do numerous, numerous videos on yellow belly stuff here. So I, I just picked about a dozen, you know, highlights of uh, yellow belly more so than some other genes that we have here in the shop. So let's, uh, let's get to Perfect. it. This doesn't look anything like the other one. This is the first and easiest combo to discuss. This is 
simply the super form of yellow bud. This is the ivory. Back in the day before leucistic, this was the poor man's leucistic. Um, you know, because this one, this one was first, and by by technical definition, it's a leucistic. It's just not nowadays the one we think of. Right? But yeah, there's a lot of color in this as well. Yeah, uh, I'm sure the camera is picking up the the yellow stripe down it, the blushing on the head. Is that how you would typically refer to it? Typically, they would have like a little browner or darker gray, even mask. Is it how I say it, you know, Mojave's and you know, that whole junk on the top of their heads. And they, the, the vertebral stripe is typical. It's often a little highlighter yellow. You'll see little yep. flecks of lavender and pink or purple around the edge. And that tends to fade as they get bigger and into maturity. But uh, the babies definitely have the most color uh, of, the so of any size on the ivory. So. Right. Not not, not not at all a white snake. No, no. <laughs> uh, when they get bigger, it, it's kind of an eggshell off-white. You know, you still have a little mask on the head, but the, the stripe is very faint. Right. So they're, they're pretty uniformly like a cream color. Well, um, I didn't want to go too deep into pie um, because, I mean, we, we could make a whole other video on pie. I just wanted to touch on it real fast with this animal and one other. Uh, very popular right now, uh, yellow belly pie combos, uh, yellow belly pied OD with YV pastel, fire, all of that is super duper hot right now. Uh, lots of great stuff getting made out there. So the the bold of the black on the pied, the little digitized uh, grainy, not grainy, uh, jagged edge of the of the pattern is indicative of yellow belly. Sometimes you'll have someone just like a little blip, like one little island of color, and sometimes you'll get more like this is a this is a relatively high pattern animal for a yellow belly. Sometimes you get a little bit more, but that's this is a good amount of pattern for a yellow belly pie. And can we see the belly on this one? <laughs> There's white. nothing. Well, There's the pie, nothing because of the pie. The it pie takes away says that. there must be white. Okay. And even in the least expressive pies, the belly is white okay. always. There are no white pies. That's a that's a thing, but the belly is always white. Okay. So, one more pie. So this hilarious thing is the cinnamon yellow belly pied. And most cinnamon pieds are just the head, sometimes not even that. They'll have like a little gray, grayish brown spot. Uh, this, this little island, tiny island of color is actually the only way that we were able to determine that it was yellow belly. So this little, little teeny bit of color, and then it's all jagged and pixelated out. Uh, in, in irregular, um, yeah. So uh, cinnamon is cinnamon is undoing anything really amazing with this combo, but maybe we can plug this into uh, something like Inchi or Pinstripe or something and, and force some pattern and see what else it can do. Like, you know, I don't I don't want to give away secrets, but like we're we're gonna do some stuff. Now we're really bringing out some color. Yeah, this is a uh, firefly yellow belly. So we've got pastel, fire, and yellow belly working here. Uh, yellow belly complements fire stuff really, really well. And the firefly alone without yellow belly is a great combo. It's one of the prettiest two gene combos, I think. I have a special place for, for firefly in my heart. But uh, coupled here with yellow belly, we get some nice. Uh, irregular markings along the belly, flames coming up, um, some digitized edges here, you know, just overall a really great color and, you know, disruption of the pattern, uh, even more so than, than fire and uh, pastel want to do without the yellow belly. And it cleans it up, it enhances the color a bit, pushes out the head a little bit more. Yellow belly doesn't only affect the, the belly, it will affect the entire snake and enhance color and, and make things pop and bold and whatnot. Okay, so we just upped our game here. This is even more striking. Just powerful color. Yeah, we, we went over on the color palette one. We didn't go up or down. So now we've got a pastel Inchi yellow belly. Now Inchi, you know, likes things to be nice and banded, and but it's, it will enhance oranges and, and blushed out markings. So we've got an intensified head stamp that's a little bit more than what a pastel inchi would typically have, 
but little burnouts in the blushing, flames up from the bottom. Uh, MG is in control of the belly line a little bit more uh, than like we saw on the Firefly. So it's a little more tame, but still a very nice, attractive animal. And so uh, we then can add things to this, like if you add fire, like it starts getting starts getting pretty pretty nutty because fire brings in a lot of disruption that allows the yellow belly more place to show itself. And this very unique head stamp, what uh, genetics in, is creating this head stamp? Well, NG wants to head stamp everything, no matter what. So, especially like there's usually a little print or something on a pastel NG just on its own. But yellow belly is, I think here, in this animal at least, allowing it to have a more influential head stamp and be a little more uh, striking in its appearance. As you've seen it it's a beautiful head stamp. They're, they're all different. They're all different, they're great. But it's it's one of the main tells of, of NG being in a thing. Some Sometimes you can have so much stuff stacked in something, but the head stamp will, you know, be the, the, the source of the NG being in the pairing. This isn't well, an uncommon no. head stamp that you no, would see. No, not really. I think just the yellow belly is enhancing uh, its presence okay. on the animal. So. Okay. Well, let's look at the next one. Okay, you're making a more drastic change. Okay, this is really drastic. Yeah, this is a fire sugar yellow belly. So yellow belly reacts really well, really well with fire, and it reacts really well with sugar. Sugar and fire is a fairly tame combo, but when you put a thing that reacts with both of those, like yellow belly, it, it starts to do quite a bit. Uh, we've got the the belly line is just blown out completely and it has now this nice white belly that uh, sugar is being provided by yellow belly in this context uh, and just a ton of chaos down here at the edge. Just, it's not only just flames, it's it's like a river of fire. Yep. You know, there's, there's no, none of the blips really make it down to the belly at all. Uh, they attempt to, but it's just, they're melting away. It's the Yellow Belly Art Show. Welcome to the Yellow Belly Art Show. Pretty Go cool. ahead. This <laughs> is a black pastel fire yellow belly sugar. And it's just amazing. <laughs> it's definitely amazing. There is a lot going on in this animal. Really beautiful. Yeah, I think you posted a baby photo of this one on the Instagram and it blew up. Oh, I fast. think I did. Now that you're this saying, that I think I absolutely it, did. Uh, yep. You know, about 100 grams yep. or so now. Uh, doing really well. It's a boy. Sorry, it's not a bill. <laughs> uh, yeah, so. Nobody likes that not available stuff. I know, but it's, it's if, if you're keeping it, there's a reason you're keeping it. Right, it's because we don't have another. Yeah. One. Well, we but then of, they will produce. We sort of have another one. Do you, do you want to see the other one? Okay. Like, what if we added something else to this? Okay. That somehow made this better. Okay. Be better, better than this? Better than this. Well, this is really cool. He's I've, full of a lot of promises. And baloney. Uh huh. And baloney. And baloney. Okay. So let's okay. see one step more. Okay. Okay, that's better. Yeah. They just keep getting better. Um, Again, different. Go ahead, explain. Orange dream. Orange dream. The other thing. Okay. This. Okay. This is it. So this is the orange dream, fire, black pastel, yellow belly. Okay, so we're minus sugar on this one. Okay. But add OD okay. in that place. Lots of orange. Yeah. Wow. That's just a silly amount of orange. Black pastel wants to have some orange. Fire says, yeah, you should definitely have some orange. And OD is like, oh, I'm orange. They, they're so, just arguing with yeah, each other. No, they're Whoever. all bringing oranges. <laughs> all of it is orange. Okay, again, you upped it. This is, again, fabulous. What do we have here? This is... Other than a racer, because this one yeah, wants to move. Good gone. luck with this. I like to see you work. Yeah, sure. Keep working. Uh, this is uh, OD Butter Inchy Gill Belly. Fabulous. Yeah, and he won't stop. I thought you were training them. When you say stop, they stop. You haven't gotten that far with this particular... I'm, I'm working on it. Okay, all right. All right, tell us what what all is going on in here. We've already said what the genes were, but mm -hmm. give us a little bit of a 
conversation about well, what's happening where. Butter Butter tries really hard to maintain its kind of alien head bubbly pattern, but uh, and she's adding a lot of oranges and and kind of the soft edges everywhere and the rustiness in between. And down at the bottom, you're getting a lot of the yellow belly action coming up from the bottom. You know, if yellow belly can be very difficult to determine in some animals in the bell complex. Uh, but there's others like this one that, first it was nice that it hatched with a non-YB sibling, so it's really easy to tell. Uh, but also, you can see a lot of what it's doing, creating the little flips within the elongated, but basically traditional belly pattern of the butter and buttery type things. So, just the overall pleasing animal to the eye, and when it gets bigger, it should be a nice rusty orange with some beige and you know it'll, it'll tone down some but you know when it hatched like this stuff in the middle was purple it, going back to just what you just said a second ago when you have a clutch clutch of, of four five six seven eight however many animals does seeing something in one help you determine another ever absolutely okay. I, I prefer to look at the whole pile of that clutch if I can and it's even better you know we use we use any male you know he could he could sire depending on the male he could sire between four and eight clutches that year and so I can go look at you know last month's kids from that boy if the mom was somewhat similar if the mom's not close then sometimes it's quite close. right but if I if I think I see a thing that I wasn't sure the first time. I'll go back a clutch and find the find the last clutch and look at all the babies from that one and make try to make the proper determination. It's not always easy. Oh no, you no. know people just think that that if this is what you do when you look, you're just gonna know for sure what it is based on the mom and the dad, and that's I mean obviously not, it's helpful, yeah. but not not indicative. Right. Uh, you know there's you know. None of the genes have to represent themselves, so there's there's that factor. Sometimes you get all NGs, and it's not a super. Right. You can get all normals from you know a pastel or an NG or anything. You don't. It doesn't have to pass the gene. The only thing, the only genes that have to be passed, if you have a visual animal like stripe or clown or something like that, it, the the very least is its babies are 100% het for whatever that gene is. Other than that, like, we're, we're flying by the seat of our pants sometimes. Right. And then sometimes when you have an animal that you think it might be, obviously you're going to say possible. Uh, yeah. We we like to be sure here, so I'll, I'll take stuff and I'll I'll move it away. There's there's stuff that no one knows exists except me and, you know, my coworkers. Uh, because I'm not 100% sure what it is. I'll, it'll get labeled at some point or we keep it. Right. There's not too many of those. We usually eventually label them. Right. So, yeah. Let's look at one or two more. Two more. This is a, a OD pewter. So it's OD cinnamon pastel yellow belly. The OD is making this really sharp. There's a lot of people would ask, like, hey, how do you know? And we've actually seen a good number of pewter, black pewter combos here that, like, it starts out really sharp and crisp at the neck and only goes to just a few inches past the head and then just blows out and it's not letting any part of it be sharp anymore. But that's that's the tell on the OD. Uh, the belly line is completely blown away and up north of the middle of the of the body, the side of the body of the snake. So yellow belly is just causing a lot of all of that. It's it's more a more tame expression of it in a way but it's actually doing a lot because if we come back through here um, if we if we could get the the ng to hit on the the allelic combo of the same thing it could be really cool right? so i don't know it's it's difficult <laughs> can you guess what an ng would do to this well an ng would actually force a lot of the normal uh, alien head type pattern back to it. We have 
we have Vinci stuff in pewters and black uh, black pewters that it, it it pretty much incites the pattern back to the snake. Because in, Inchi's kind of in this case, like Inchi would be like demanding that there would be pattern here. Right. When cinnamon, it cinnamon's pretty willing to be stripy. OD doesn't care, and Yellow Belly is pretty happy to be stripy too. So that's how I look at each gene, how it reacts, and how they're reacting with each other. Right. This is beautiful, and I'm gonna try and learn something from you. Okay. This one I actually guess minus one. Banana, leopard, and chi, and since this is yellow belly, there must be yellow belly. Yeah, that's the gimme. That's the gimme, because it's, it's a yellow belly video. Yeah. This is our last one. Um, leopard is definitely in charge on this uh, banana combo. Uh, typically, Typically, yellow belly gets kind of stifled by a leopard until you get something like this where uh, Inchi is allowing some space and some voids in the pattern, and uh, yellow belly is able to come all the way up from the belly and uh, get in some of these big voids. Uh, then you get the deep orange and rust colors with the little uh, lavender blowouts in between some of the edges. Uh, that's those little, the little white bits, uh, lavender bits, that is the yellow belly coming through. Uh, and those will, there's a period of time in, in this animal's life where that'll go basically like an off-white, pinkish white, uh, and then, you know, it'll, it'll kind of uh, melt together as it gets older and its color become a little more uniform. Um, and the head stamp, that's influenced from the Enchi, am I correct? Enchi and Leopard are causing that head stamp like that, and I believe Yellow Belly to be causing the little bluish uh, washout in the middle of that. And then, you know, that'll get colored in as it gets bigger. Uh, it'll become more uniform. You know, they, most of the combos look the best when they're babies, so I mean, it's, this is typical of anything, really, uh, besides a few, uh, a few genes out there. It's a very vibrant snake. Yeah. And here in two or three hundred grams, this thing will just be glowing and really, really bold color. That purple is actually going to get deeper, and then it will start to, to fade a bit as it ages. How much is a bit? Because again, we talked about it earlier in yeah. another video. They all change to they some all, degree. They all change. Um, not drastically. Uh, the, the, the banana leopard without Inchi or without yellow belly. It's actually a really great combo where it holds a lot of color. I say a bit because they're not all identical. You know, not not one is going to uh, fade exactly like another or become bold or be speckled like another. You know, this animal should have relatively few speckles and she tends to reduce those, but it could have a lot because yellow belly increases them. Okay. So we'll see uh, later on down the road uh, with this animal, uh, if which, which gene prevails over the minimal freckling, uh, which uh, I think it's great. It's a trait of the banana or coral glow, but some people uh, chase animals that are uh, high freckle or low freckle or no freckle. Right. So. That's that's what I was wondering because of the banana, the part of banana in this animal, how many freckles it may or may not get, and that's what I was wondering. I There's going to be a conflict because, right. like I said, Inchi wants to reduce, and Yellow Belly wants there to be right. freckles. So right. we'll see how it plays out. Yeah, yeah this is a really great combo, uh, and we we've got a ton more Yellow Belly stuff to be able to show you. We'll, this is one of those videos I, I think I can safely say we'll have a part two yellow belly in the future because we can just we can touch on completely different combos um, and not still not delve into pie and not delve into clown very much uh, and still do yellow belly justice properly. And as you said, putting yellow belly into anything, having yellow belly into anything, I mean, that you would be very happy with. Yeah. Yep. So basically, in your genetic pool, you need yellow belly, according to Genetics with Jeff. Hashtag Genetics. That is it for this week's edition of, as we said, Genetics with Jeff. I just wanted to touch on something really quickly. U.S. ARC. We would like to make sure that everybody is aware of U.S. ARC. We are going to have a link in the description below. Click on that. You can become a member. 
This is an organization that helps our reptile community. If there is a state and there are bylaws trying to be passed to outlaw something as simple as a ball python or maybe a tegu or maybe a gator, it doesn't matter. Everybody should have the right to keep these animals. We need to fight these laws and we are doing it with US ARC. So we would like you again to please click the link down below and consider becoming a member. As far as our channel goes, like, comment, subscribe. You can say more this time. Click the bell. Is that enough? Yeah. Yeah. I, I can I say the whole thing? Yeah. Like, comment, subscribe, click the bell, comment down below. I'll answer your questions. You're gonna answer them? Yes. Yes. He told me I have to. He has to, and he will. We will see you next week. Take care. Bye. <laughs> Today we're gonna start with a straight up yellow belly. Sure, Jenna. Oh, that is Garth Brooks. Start that again. That was good. Well, not your interlude. Um, tell you what, we're gonna look, what, we're look at yellow belly, belly yellow. today. You're way out. <laughs> You're like you moved. You're so you, you were I supposed did, to say I exactly well, where I, I left no, you. No, no, I, I had to itch my nose from a fly. Do it here. <laughs> and I'm, honest to God. <laughs> Who are you calling every night? I'm jealous now. You were supposed to just go with it. You were supposed to just intuitively <laughs> go with it. And you're like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Read the room. <laughs>